Hey everyone, thanks for uh, tuning into this week's episode of Going With Rowan. I am Amanda. I'm Josh. And we're here with our friend Garrett Gerard of Garrett okay. with uh, Gerard Heating and Cooling. He is going to show us a few tips and tricks. Sure, sure. Come right this way. I'll show you how to make sure your stuff doesn't break down. Let's go. All right, Garrett, what do we got here? Well, this is a furnace. Uh, this is, you know, it's all taken apart, but it works. Everybody knows to change the filter, obviously. Not well, everybody. Well, some people don't. Most people should know to change their furnace. So How often do we change that? It really depends on the size. If you've got a really huge one, you can. I change mine like once a year, uh, which is probably sacrilegious to some people out there. But uh, that's right yeah. here. Yeah. I'd really say like, you know, once every three months is probably fine. The manufacturer will tell you once every month, but that's what I'd say if I manufacture them too. Do you like the, like, these kind or like the 3M pleated heavy duty? I personally like these. You know, that's a good question. If you're if you're having an airflow issue, actually air flows through these a lot better yeah. than the, the you know, better filters. But if you got issues with the allergens or just a lot of dust in your house that you're tired of wiping down, uh, then you can get um, a higher MERV rating filter, uh, which will filter all that stuff out. I've got allergies. So I uh, use a MERV 13 filter, um, okay. which takes all that out and makes a big difference. And why does it matter why the arrow, which way the arrow is? On that one it doesn't, but okay. on some of them they've got little you know, metal mesh that's holding it together. And if you turn it around backwards, it'll just implode on itself. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I think it's funny, so I don't yeah. discourage it. Um, what are some <laughs> issues usually people run into when their furnace breaks? When their furnace breaks, it's usually due to one of two things. Uh, usually it's something simple. There's gonna be some kind of uh, safety switch that's going bad. So you've got the uh, pressure switch here, the limit switch here, there's some rollout switches here. This is attached to the flame sensor. One of those things is going bad and just shutting the system down. Um, or the heat exchanger could be falling apart and you need to be furnace. But usually, you know, especially if it's only 15 years old or so mm -hmm. and you're having issues, all right, so if you want to know what's wrong with your furnace, if it's not working, usually there'll be a little peep sight uh, in the bottom panel here. You can look down on this board, and right there's a little uh, red light. Yeah. Um, and if it's, you know, uh, solidly uh, flashing, just like beep, 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 that's fine. But sometimes you'll get two flashes or three flashes or seven flashes, and that'll tell you what sensor is going bad and what you need to replace. So it's okay. kind of a cheat code. Okay. And so the heat, you have a heat exchanger over here that kind of... If it goes bad, this is usually the part that... Anything up front here goes bad, we just replace it and uh -huh. the furnace keeps on going. If this goes bad, this is the heat exchanger back here. Uh, if that goes bad, you kind of need a new furnace. That's uh, sort okay. of the motor. You can't just change the heat exchanger out or it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Usually at that point, the furnace is toast. It's like changing the engine and changing yeah, the engine on a 1987 Cutlass. It's just kind of not worth it. I mean, you could, but like, why, right. you know? So what's the average furnace usually last? Um, it really depends. Um, I'd give, you know, not to like hate on any brands, but like, let's say Goodman. Right. Uh, it's only gonna we have a Goodman. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a really common furnace. Um, they're not expensive, but you get what you pay for. Yeah. I mean, they'll last like 15 years, uh, usually something around there. Mm -hmm. I've seen them go a lot longer. A lot of that depends on maintenance and how it was installed. But like, you know, after 15 years or so, you're on borrowed time. This yeah. But an Armstrong Air or Armstrong Air, that's <laughs> AC? Uh, yeah, they do AC and furnace air. Right? Units. Mm -hmm. um, any recommendations to the homeowner just to, you know, keep it lifelong, Running right. lasting as long as possible, I should say? Yeah, Once sure. Set and done. Yeah, yeah, if you want to keep this thing lasting a long time, pretty much just uh, spray these fins out with water about, you know, every spring to just get all the little dust and things off of it. Uh, it'll, it'll just uh, be a lot more efficient. I mean, sometimes I'll like go outside and like pull a cat off of these fins. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> and it's not going to be as efficient in that condition. So the more airflow you can get through here, the better. Uh, don't worry about... Uh, any of this stuff, like spraying it off. A lot of people, times people think that they're gonna hurt the equipment by spraying it off, but just don't like pull this cover off and spray inside yeah. there. That's all the electronics. That would not be great. Right. Uh, but the rest of this is impervious to water damage. I mean, it's meant to be outside, so right. just spray it off. 
Garrett, we absolutely love working with you and we are, <laughs> you know you're one of our favorite people. Um, but we wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk to us about HVAC and a little bit about um, Gerard Houdin Cooling. So. Sure, pleasure. Uh, all I would ask is if, you're, if you've gotten a quote uh, to replace this equipment from anybody with a billboard, give us a call. We're going to be a whole lot less and we'll put the same equipment in with a longer warranty. So, how about you use anybody else? And uh, you guys really have some pretty top-notch dad jokes, so we always, I know clients appreciate that as well. That's really nice. <laughs> um, the Rowan Group also wanted to thank commercial specialists for allowing us to come in and film in such an awesome space. They, uh, what a killer dream room. Training room. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Also, yeah, thanks. We got Pat over here. Are you camera shy or do you want to come say hi? No, I'll come say hi. Okay, this is Pat. Hello, Hello everybody. Pat, Welcome to Commercial Specialist. Glad you guys <laughs> come by. Yeah. Right. Pat was uh, gracious enough to let us come in here and kind of crash the training facility for a little bit. So, again, thank you. But uh, we hope you guys have a great week. If you have any questions for us to cover on future episodes, we would love to be your helpful resource in real estate or anything else that related. Garrett, again, thanks. Have a good week, everybody. This video is brought to you by Armstrong Hair. They're better than anybody and they last long. There you go. Ew. We're not going to talk on. about waxing? Well, yeah, we definitely want to wax the top of it because the sun beats down on it all. That's right. That's right. So I, I usually wax weekly. Weekly? Okay. Okay. Or maybe once a week. Do you do like the turtle wax? Turtle wax? I usually like do the sec. Thanks again for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you next week on Going with Rowan.